Today is the big day. We are going to sail. But before we go to sail, first a cup of coffee and a few other essential things that we need to do. So while you drink a cup of coffee, just before you go out to sail, check out the weather maps. If the weather window that you predicted is still there. And this is the Mediterranean, so I think this is, it's like Mediterranean. Where we are now, no wind and <laughs> just a few miles offshore, a lot of wind. Luckily for us, kind of like in the direction where we want to go and in, in a few days time the Maltemi will be here but I think by then we passed it so we will have the wind from the back or well, actually on the broad you know, beam ridge it goes almost to the back then we're out of there and of course you can only see the weather for a couple of days so we have no idea what's happening on the other side of five days. Um, so let us compare the weather with other models. Let us see how that looks like. So I'm comparing here with the, with the American model, the GFF, the global model, and also the European model, the ECMWF. And then also on this one, I'm looking at the uh, uh, German one, Meteor Blue. Uh, actually, this is the Swiss one, the Meteor Blue, and the bottom one is the Icon, which is the Swiss one. So over here we can see there, the three, three out of the four models is saying there is some wind in that, but it is in the direction where we want to go, so that is fine. And then a few days later, we will start getting it. That one, say, we'll get it from the front. That one's from the front. But here, it's going to be beam ridge, beam ridge, beam ridge again. That, that is gone. Let's go to the chart plotter and enter our final passage plan into the chart plotter. We can start by setting all our instruments on. And yes, they are all switching on. Everything looks good. So we need to enter it into our chart plotter and we can actually do some auto routing here. Okay, so the, the route is in, in the plotter and I'm just, well, this is now the, the route, but I'd go through the route now just to make sure that I know where all the danger points is going to be, where we're going to be going close past some rocks and things like that. And that will let me know, like here is a cable, 25 meters, that is maybe... For us a problem, I need to keep that in mind, or I can go around here that way. Anyway, the route is in the plotter, so we are good here. Take the rubbish ashore, because this is one of your last times that you will have. quick engine check which is also thorough engine check 
and um, again I'll do it in the next episode but yeah, what you basically do is you check the water levels you check the oil you check the belts um, you check the bulges whether there's any leaks in the bulges and you check for any leaks while you're in the bulges as well you see that there's anything going wrong there and then the last one you check is the electronics but I'll do that in next episode there is certain seacocks that you will will not need to open and some of them that you just don't cannot open like your black water tank of course you cannot open it while you're in the marina or very close to shore and then there's certain seacocks like your water maker that you need to ensure it is open um, and also the other seacocks that you maybe some of the heads that you need to open so make sure that the right seacocks are open a seacock that is definitely need to be open is the engine cooling the raw cooling water so make sure that that one is at least open if you have a radar reflector and you're on anchor now it's the time to change also the the shape of the of the radar from maybe a ball to a cone and if you're going to motor a cone with an arrow you know the the, the day shapes for for motoring we will be on ais so for us we will just switch on the ais which is already actually switched on and um, that's it but remember to change your your radar reflector in preparation for sailing because we are a sailboat i will start unzipping the stack pack it is for tall people And what I normally do is I tie the zip to the back to the topping lift because otherwise it can wrap around the boom like it happened before and <laughs> it creates just havoc. Um, so we don't want that. What we do is we normally put the halyard here at the back. And the earlier then will not slam on the mast in the marina. So one less tang tang to be worried about. But now we need to make it tang tang again. So I'm going to move it to the front. And the trick here is, is to ensure that it is not twisted. Okay, we also need to remove the shore power. So let's make sure that the, it's off first here. I normally unplug the shore first because it has these bigger things and it can slip out very easier. So no sparks can be generated or I think the least amount of sparks is generated here. If you, if you were on water, make sure that the water is out and don't forget to <laughs> take your fitting with you. You will not get it back on your return, if you ever return. So, take it with you. Normally, if we work around here, we leave these lazarets open so that we can easily come in and out. So, you have to secure the lazarets, make sure that they are closed. Close all hatches.
There we go. Close all the hatches, make sure these ones are closed. Stow all loose things that can go flying. I'm ready. Is it going to be cold out there? <laughs> Not now. But maybe, you know, it's a Mediterranean, you never know. So make sure your crew is dressed appropriately. If it's going to be hot like today, then I don't think this is needed. But if it is like Cape Town, you might think that outside there it is going to be cold. So make sure your crew is dressed appropriately and <laughs> things that's going to go fly if it's very windy needs to be taken off. And remember rule number one, sunscreen, if it's going to be hot. So call the marina and ask whether you can leave some marinas they will send the, the mariners out and they will come and help and tie your lines dock lines and if the spaces are tight they will even maneuver the dinghy to help you out so let's call the marina Finnick marina Finnick marina this is sisu 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 over So do a radio call for the marina that you're going to you want to exit. Uh Marina, this is Sisu. Can we go for a pump out please? Okay, Captain, uh, I am coming. Thank you very much. Uh, let's take all our thingies off. <coughs> Also check that you have your spare fenders or running fenders ready to the lines, the fender line. Now that the engine is running, what we do is, or what I normally check is, which is the line that we will want to release the last. And that's the line that they will first try to untie and then tie up for a slip. So that one we're going to untie first, so but keep it there. And we're going to untie the bow after that. And then we're going to use this line the stern line as a slip. So I'm going to prepare, Pietro can repair, prepare this for a slip. So it should just be a matter of easy to just unhook it and bring it up with a short line so nothing can, can come into the propeller if it drops in the water. Let's do that. The stern line, the one that we want to go with last, is a short line on top working line and then just normal loop here so it can easily cast it off now this one at the back I'm going to also untie okay that line is now untied and Sisu is busy now moving so it's time for me to get onto the boat and what I will do is I put the engine forward so that we will pull on the stern line here and then I know that line can be released, the bow spring line. So while we're going forward, I'm just making sure that 
we are not going to break stuff it looks good we stay forward okay we don't move so both both engines is now forward okay we're going to go to the field dock now so i need to make sure that this line is ready for the field dock again while the engines is warming up we can start taking the shore lines off and you have to decide which shore lines you're going to use with met wearing not a big problem um, so for us we're going to take the long shore lines first and then these ones i think we'll take last and the stern stern lines will take second last so let's take them off one of our viewers actually very sharp guy he asked why are we using dynamas um, because dynama doesn't stretch and he's 100 percent correct so this is my dock line setup i first have a chain because this is very rough cement and this very rough cement is not good on any of the lines so i've got a piece of chain shackle a bowline with a long knot so that you cannot accidentally unfasten this and then we've got this thing here the this line can go two and a half times it can stretch two and a half times um, the, the the length of this piece of rubber and then it goes to sisu and I've got another one that's also absorbing quite a lot is the stern stern line and it is more or less the same so we've got a piece of chain to get this off this rough cement and in the spring pollen and it goes to the cleat with an anti chafing sleeve around it and also remember your passerelle we've got a makeshift passerelle because we don't actually do the wearing thing that often and yeah we have to take it off and stow it away okay so i'm busy casting off the lines and we're going to do the forward lines first so i need to make sure that we don't drift backwards and for that just going to put this a little bit in forward here and then I can cast off the lines there so Pietro and the guy is casting off the lines while Pietro is casting that last lines off there I need to make sure that we don't drift backwards and so check the wind now where the boat is going to drift and of course we don't want to go into our friend's boat here okay we're almost ready to take the turn Okay, for all the viewers that have watched up till now, <laughs> this is the COVID-19 period, so we're not really going for a sale. And if there's any comments below that says, oh, we should be under quarantine, we shouldn't go out, you guys have not watched till here. And all the guys have that did watch with us till now, please tell him that I actually said on the video, we actually only going for a pump out and if you heard my radio call you would have heard that in the radio call as well but for the purpose of this video we are going sailing and to be under quarantine and actually be able to go for just a small ride it is it is really a bliss okay Now would be the time that Pietro will start taking the fenders in while we're going out. 
and um, so you need to make sure that you bring all the fenders in for the purpose of this visit we are going to keep the fenders out because we're just going to go to the to the pump out station this is one of the last series that we're going to do on bow checks there's still in the full complete engine check that we're going to do and I'm also going to do checks that you need to do while you're on passage. And if you see what you like, please remember to subscribe. And for all of you that have your own YouTube channels, if there is anybody asking questions on your forum that you think one of our videos might be appropriate or might help them along or yes, just generally give them extra advice, Please refer them to our channel. There are current ambassadors that already do that on any other forum. I saw a couple of you guys already, and Roger is one of them, and Claire Rory and Rory, and, yeah, Rory and Claire, and Lynn and Andy Challenger. Yeah, so all of these guys. Thank, thank you guys. You. It just helps us. This is this is just a very small way of supporting our channel, and thank you very much for that. Thank you. <laughs>